Hello! Welcome to another immigration art video. My name is Art Saratelli, and together with my law partner Mara Mial, the two of us are the attorneys that run the Saratelli Mial PLLC immigration law firm. We've got clients all over America and all over the world. We're very active on social media. Check us out. Google our name, Saratelli Mial PLLC. If you've got a question, we'll have an answer. Today's video is part one of a two-part series concerning the new OPT STEM extension rules. Everybody knows that now you can get a STEM extension for OPT for up to 24 months. So your original OPT for 12 months plus 24 equals 36 months. That's three years. We've split the OPT STEM extension topic into two videos because the first video just deals with the specifics of the transition between the 17-month OPT program and the 24-month OPT program. So in a few months, this video, this first part, it's irrelevant. So we'll do it now, do it once, get it over with, and then get to the good stuff. Ready? Go. People who are currently on a 17-month OPT extension. That's group number one in transition. Group number two. Group number two. Group number two is what if you applied for a 17-month extension before May 10th, but the government took no action because of this crazy court case that was going on and screwed everything up to begin with? Group number three, in transition. Who are the lucky people in group number three? They are the people who have not yet filed for a STEM OPT extension. These people in group number three are the folks who are still in the first 12 months of their regular OPT, and they want an extension based on STEM. Transition rule number one, and I'm reading this. It's no magic. I read the regulations. I took some notes, and I'm just reading right off the notes. Here we go. Rule number one, F1 employees, students, currently on the 17-month STEM OPT extension are eligible to apply for the additional seven months, 17 plus 7 equals 24, if if they have at least 150 days remaining on their STEM extension at the time of filing for the extra seven months. So this means if you've got less than five months left in your 17 months of OPT, no 24 months for you. Why? Only God knows. Who knows why? Um, these applications can be submitted only. Now, this is key. These applications for the extra seven months can only be submitted between May 10, 2016 and August 8, 2016. So this whole video, this video covers only the period from May 10, 2016 to August 8, 2016. The five months, by the way, from May 10th, that takes you to October. The government here is talking about October 8th. So if you right now are on a STEM OPT extension that lasts for 17 months, 
and your OPT STEM extension for 17 months expires before October 8, 2016, no extra seven months for you. Why? Again, who knows? Who knows these rules? What if you applied for a 17-month extension, but the government has taken no action as of May 10th? Then, instead of approving your case and just giving you 24 months, the government is going to, are you ready? Are you ready? The government's going to send you a letter and say, hey, dear student who asked for 17 months of OPT extension before we shut everything down because of a lawsuit, we are going to ask you politely to please take your 17-month OPT request and change it into a 24-month request. And then they'll process that. All right. Not great. Not bad. It's extra paperwork, but it's an extra seven months. Yeah. These people... And group number three are the folks who are still in the first 12 months of their regular OPT and they want an extension based on STEM. If you file a brand new STEM extension application after May 10, the magic date, May 10, if you file a brand new STEM extension, you're going to get an application that requests 24 months. In other words, this group number three, people who apply for STEM extension brand new after May 10th, they are the first group in, in actuality. They are the first group to process normally under the 24-month extension system. And there you have it. If you have any questions, <laughs> if you have any questions, if you have any questions, please ask your international student advisor. They know the best. They know the most. Lawyers like me don't know the details of OPT. This is true. A lawyer who was not a DSO or an international student advisor before they became a lawyer, they could potentially ruin your life. Do not think that a lawyer simply because they are a lawyer. Don't think a lawyer knows more about F1 status than your advisor. I can't say this enough. Do not think that a lawyer, simply because they are a lawyer, don't think a lawyer knows more about F1 status than your advisor. I can't say this enough. Okay, so if you have any questions about who you should ask for help, send me a message. Send me an email, and I'll let you know if that's a DSO, uh, International Student Advisor question, or if it's something for um, an immigration lawyer, an immigration lawyer like me. So thanks again.